How's it going, everybody? Just so you know, this is a part three of three-part Sonic retrospective. If you have not seen part one and part two, click the card now to check them out. Otherwise, continue watching and enjoy. After this Sega knew they needed to do something big and, uh, you know, get people looking at Sonic again. So the next two games coming up are Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces. So I think we should talk about them kind of side by side also, just because I think there's a, A, there's tons of comparisons made between them. B, they came out basically a month between each other. So how do you feel about those two? Well, starting with Sonic Mania, I absolutely loved it when it came out. I remember uh, seeing, you know, Christian Whitehead, who I knew was responsible for the retro engine, because uh, I know Sega used that for the Sonic CD port of uh, Sonic, Sonic CD port, <laughs> the Xbox and PS4 <laughs> Sonic CD, and uh, absolutely loved it. It fixed every issue that I had with Sonic CD as far as collision detection, uh, so on and so forth. So when I heard that he was, you know, heading the project for Sonic Mania, you know, a Sonic fan creating a Sonic game, and you know, and I know he's done work in the Sonic community as far as like you know fan games and things like that. It has a really good track record. So when I heard the Sega's kind of letting him do his thing with this project, I automatically got excited for it. So when I finally played it, it was everything that I loved about 2D Sonic. The physics were amazing. The original stages were great. The sprite work was incredible. Like it, I, I know people always say like this is the Sonic game that we should have got on the Sega Saturn. And uh, yeah, it feels that way. You know, the, the 2D sprites are super fluid. The game looks amazing. It brought back, you know, more obscure characters like Mighty and Ray. Oh, it, it just did so much. Now, as I played it more and more, you know, because I do play this game quite a bit on Switch, um, you know, for request, one of the only critiques that I have now is I just really wish this game had more original stages because the original yeah. stages that are in this game are phenomenal. I love the, um, the what's the name of that stage? Uh, Studiopolis, yes. I love Studiopolis so much. And I just say, yo, when they do have an original stage in this game, it is great. Minus the final stage. That's a, that's a whole nother, you know, rant there, but. How to say this delicately. You're a horrible roommate and nobody in this house likes you. I just, <laughs> I, I don't mind the remixing of existing stages, but I think the only thing that kind of like just turned me up a little bit was we just got Generations not too long ago. So the fact that we're still reusing some of these established stages and remixing them again, that concept is fine. If if you're going to make Sonic Mania like its own sub-series, like maybe get a Sonic Mania 2 or something like that, this is fine as an introduction to that style and kind of test the waters. And I think that's what Sega wanted to do with this, kind of play it safe to see how well this game is received. And I think the next Sonic Mania, if they do, if they do decide to do like a Sonic Mania 2, is going to have all original stages. Um, but yeah, yeah that, that's all yeah. with it. It's just the, the reusing of stages that we've been playing for years. Yeah, no, I, that was my biggest complaint about this game too. And I, I, I watched a couple of interviews um, and they were they were talking about Sonic Mania and how it was being developed and what led to the reuse of some stages. And originally, Sonic Mania was supposed to be about four levels. Oh. So when they, when Christian Whitehead and, and his team reached out to Sega to ask to, to implement more levels because they didn't want a, a shorter game, mm -hmm. um, Sega started confirming already pre-existing levels so that's that's where we saw chemical plant and that's where we saw hydro city and lava reef and that's why those levels were even implemented in the first place to try to extend the game out a little bit yeah. um i did appreciate the remixing because it, it kind of act one was always very reminiscent of where it came from and then act two was they kind of went remixed with it especially levels like oil ocean mm -hmm. um that, that's you know a huge big difference in uh, how the level was developed um and stylized but i i do really really love this game um and i i do really think that sonic mania overall should be a staple for some 2d games mm -hmm. um one thing i other than having levels and whatnot is I don't like that it seems I don't like the direction that some people are taking with Sonic Mania of this should be it 
forever. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like this is the gold standard because, you know, we discussed some good games um, that came out of you know the last ten years of generations, colors, you know, Lost World, All Stars Racing Transformed, and uh, Sonic Four Episode Two, and you know. Um, I did get kind of tired of hearing like, you know, every game reviewer ever starting Sonic has a lot, has had a rough couple of years over <laughs> the last, you know, four or five years. And I was like, Jesus, you know, here we go. <laughs> here we go. But, you know, I, I don't think games like Sonic Boom and Sonic 06 define Sonic. Unfortunately, they do. But at the same time, you know, Sonic Mania, great game. It's a classic. I love Studiopolis. Press Gardens also was one of my favorite levels in that game. Um, Mirage Saloon was really clever. I love those callbacks to, you know, Knack and Bark and Bean in that boss oh, yeah. fight. And that was another thing. The, the bosses in this game are great. Like, they're, they're really, oh, really yeah. innovative and they're really, really fun to play through. Um, I actually... I've been playing Sonic Mania the last couple weeks um, just because I've, I've had an itch to do it. And I, I've kind of like, whenever I play Sonic games, I have like this own, I like, I, I make my own achievements for myself. Okay. Like, you know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, okay, I need to do Sonic and Tails, beat the game and get all the seven Chaos Emeralds. Okay, sure. now I did that. Okay, now I need to do Sonic and beat the game, get all the Emeralds. <laughs> okay, great, I did that. Now let me do it with Mighty. Now let me right, do it with Tails. Yeah. So I kind of like, I'm a completionist in that sense that I need to do this, you know, in order to beat the game or, or in my head at least. But yeah, absolutely. it's it's a, it's a really it's a really good game. And um, I, I do hope that they, they need to keep these guys around. You know, they need to keep um, Christian Whitehead and his team around Sonic um, moving forward and hopefully there is a sequel that, that features more exclusive levels. Yeah, 100% agree. Uh, and again, with the boss fights, uh, you're right. The boss fights were super, super <laughs> unique and impressive. Like, I, I think everybody had that awe moment, especially growing up with the Genesis is, uh, in the chemical plant where you fight, you know, Eggman. And it's a callback to his spinoff game, Me Bee Machine. I remember me and my mom used to play that like crazy as a kid. So when I saw that was included, I just had like that awe moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Yep. And, <laughs> and, um, it's kind of funny. I, I play I play Mean uh, Mean Bean Machine more than I should because like when were you gonna lock it in Sonic Mania? Once you get all the the, the medals, oh, really? uh, when you get a certain yeah, if if you collect a certain amount of medals in the extras, there's like a question marked out areas, and you can actually unlock that oh. game and play with people. So I play with that. I do that all the time. Oh, that I did not know. Awesome. Yeah. I, I don't know the exact number of medals, but you have to look it up of how many medals it is. It, oh, I, it, it must be within the 20s or whatever medals or so. Once you get the gold medals, once you get like collect all the blue spheres and the rings, you can unlock it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Cool. So let's jump into Sonic Forces. This was one of those games where I know it had a lot of hype leading up to it because everyone kind of perceived it as... Sonic Generations 2. Uh, uh, and that's kind of how it looked from the outward appearance, but yeah. hands on, you know, now you have the game. How did you feel? You know, Sonic Forces was a very interesting game. Now, now I'm not going to say it did any, I'm not going to say everything about the game was bad because there, there were some good elements here. So, number one, the OC character, the fact that they brought something that has been always a big component of the Sonic fan base of uh, the original character, the fact that they actually put that in the canon game, I thought was really cool. You know, the fact that you can kind of create your character and you can unlock like these different accessories, you know, based on other Sega franchises like Knight, Super Monkey Ball, so on and so forth. Uh, I like that character customization. I did think that was cool and I thought the gadgets that you get equipped with your uh, OC was pretty cool as well. The other positive, I thought the game looked really good. I know Sega was saying that this used the Hedgehog Engine 2.0. So that means Unleashed, Unleashed Colors and Generations used the 1.0. And I will say from a control standpoint, I thought Sonic Forces controlled damn good. Like I like the way that you know Sonic looked. I like how the boost animation looked in this game better than the previous ones. 
And I think from an aesthetic standpoint, Sonic Forces was really like one of the biggest standouts for me is like when you're you know grinding through the space level and you see like the backdrop of the moon and the space, the game looks really good, especially on like a PS4 Pro or something like that. Um, the negatives, the the way that they shorten each of the levels, I don't know why they did that. I, I'm still really trying to figure out, okay, why did we split this particular section into six acts? You know, that part just breaks the flow up for me entirely. Uh, the fact sure. that you run through the first stage is like a minute long, okay? Then you go through the second stage, it's the same thing. I'm like, so these little bite-sized stages really kind of killed the overall flow of the game. Now, if we take that out of it, if Sonic Forces, let's say the alternate universe of Sonic Forces was, you know, each level was the length of a traditional Sonic game or Sonic title, I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. I just think some of the, the decisions they made, you know, with the game itself, just kind of like, just kind of killed it for me. When I played through this game, I wasn't... I think this is kind of another Sonic Forces and Sonic Lost World to me are kind of on a similar boat where expectations don't meet reality mm -hmm. um, of what people are, are thinking and how it should be incorporated. Um, I know you, you kind of pointed out the space level where, where Sonic, you know, breaks out of the Death Egg after being captured by um, Zavok and, you know, escaping basically. And that level in that game is is an outlier to the rest like it's actually a full-blown level you know and, and you're yeah. right you have those little little bite size like oh i'm done okay <laughs> oh why am i why am i doing green hill zone again oh okay i guess i'll do it again okay well okay i beat that level and then now i'm it didn't feel like there was cohesion between the levels and right. kind of what you were supposed to be doing one of the things too, I the OC character was interesting, but I did feel it should have just been Sonic and the OC. I, I felt they just kind of threw classic Sonic into it. And in my opinion, classic Sonic controlled worse than Generations. Really? He fell faster. Um, the, the classic Sonic himself. Uh, modern Sonic, I think controlled better in motion. But when you were slow, you kind of felt, I felt the stiffness. Like, uh, for instance, you know, when Sonic jumps and does the homing attack when there's nothing there. And in, in Sonic Adventure titles, that would propel him forward. And then he would yeah. kind of move forward into a direction of where you wanted to go. Now, if he does it, he kind of just like falls like a rock. Um, so I, I, I think in motion, and that's kind of where we were discussing it how in Sonic Lost World where you know, you can play. You, you don't. You don't need to be going at zero to a hundred. You can. You can play Sonic Lost World at any pace you'd like. Same thing with the adventure titles. Right. And I. And I think when you play a game like Sonic Forces, when you play Sonic Colors, Generations Unleashed, all this stuff with the boost formula in mind, those games are designed with going fast, and they try to make you going fast a thing, and, and make sure those controls are are tight you know at least so i think when you kind of come to that slow down that's where i feel that stiffness in sonic's movement and, and, and whatnot um i do feel one thing that maybe we haven't discussed that is is always a frequent issue with, that comes up with this game and maybe a couple of games before this that we, we talked about is the story right and i know you mentioned that um, you're not big into the, the stories of, of, you know, Sonic and whatnot, and, you know, you have the cartoon vibes and more the more serious vibes of the game and, and whatnot. So I, I think I kind of view how the Sonic stories are on, like, you know, a, a left to right, like, a spectrum, you know? Like, I have on the far right of it is Sonic 06 with, like, the super, super <laughs> dark story, you know, like, the world is on fire, and it's, right. it's burning, and you have Mephiles coming to try to kill Sonic, and <laughs> then, like, you kind of move in a little bit, and then you have, you know, Sonic Adventures, uh, and then you move in a little further, and then, like, it maybe in the middle is, like, Sonic Heroes. Yeah. And then if you move a little bit to the left, you have, you know, Colors, Lost Worlds, and, and so forth on that side right. of the story spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. And with Sonic Forces, I, it was very, the, the tone of the game is kind of strange because 
it went with a darker tone of the story, but the writing is still that Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> yeah. You, you, know what you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, the game opens up, and it basically says Sonic is presumed dead for the last, I don't know, some odd six months, and everyone's in trouble, and, and he's being tortured. So then you beat the level, then you, you find Sonic, and he's just chilling in his jail cell, just hanging out, like, hey, what's going on, guys? Like, that was, right, right, so yeah, it's it's yeah. very, that to me, I think, kind of threw me for a loop, because I was like, okay, um, what is going on? <laughs> like, like is, yeah, is this supposed yeah. to be the serious tone Sonic game that people are fans of? Or is this going to be more of, you know, that Sonic Colors S type game? Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that's another big factor that plays into some of these games. Same thing with Lost World, you know, where where I was was kind of talking about how, um, you know, not only was you had th that expectation of generations there, but pe people like that more serious style story. I guess it kind of gives it substance. Um, and I, I think to me, this game was struggling to figure out how to do both at the same time. And right, because I think with uh, with colors and Lost World, they kind of developed this audience. You know, with, and this could have been you know Sonic being on on the Nintendo platform. They kind of had this. Sonic has always built a younger, you know, the younger demographic. So, I guess with the more darker tones, they tried to appease both like people who were fans of the old six story, Adventure One and Two stories, and appeal to the fans of the colors Lost World style stories. And it just kind of like you say, kind of clashes. <laughs> yeah. I can remember the game opens up and they're like, where's Tails? And like, Tails is not doing so good. He's he's lost his mind since. And then you see Tails, he looks fine. I'm like, oh, okay, he's, I guess he's good. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. Story, I, you know, is, is there. It's, it's less yeah. of a yeah. thing. Go, going back to some of the gameplay, one of the things that Sonic Forces lacks that colors and generations and you know and any other game that Bruce Fornoir has is just some inspired level design yeah. um, I, I did feel this game was very like you can literally walk up to some of the enemies and they will do nothing to you they're they are they are there just to stay in your way <laughs> and um, if I see Green Hill Zone one more time my head's gonna explode <laughs> so and that was that's kind of my my take on it. I I think it was a very, I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was great. I I, I consider it to be an average Sonic game. Besides the the Olympic Games, uh, on Mario and Sonic 2020 Olympic Games, um, the other game that came out was Team Sonic Racing, right? So this is technically I guess Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games is the latest, but we'll talk about Team Sonic Racing because that's purely Sonic, and I don't think there's mu much else I could put into the Olympic Games other than I liked it. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much same. Uh, so how did you feel about this? is the third installment of, of Sumo Digital's racing series. Was it better? Was it worse? Where do you feel? It's not better. Well, I'm just going to put that out there. It's, it's not. It's not better than um, Team Sonic Racing Transformed. I think, again, I hold Team Sonic Racing Transformed to such a high regard. So... You know, when they announced this, there was a couple of red flags for me personally. So, number one, if they were gonna, if you're gonna kind of market this as a sequel to that game, why take out the other Sega characters? You know, I think you know one of the things that you can do from the All Stars Racing Transform and even the original game, it was can be used as like a marketing tool to introduce fans of Sonic. You can keep Sonic's name in it, but you can take the fans of Sonic and introduce them to the other Sega properties outside of Sonic. You could use that as an opportunity to put in, you know, maybe like Kiro Majima from Yakuza, put back Knights, put back the Super Monkey Ball characters, you know, revisit Skies of Arcadia, so on and so forth. So red flag number one for me is when they went right back to just strictly Sonic characters and nothing else. Okay, fine, whatever. We're gonna go have we're gonna have a pure Sonic racing game. Then when the game came out, and I think the game really suffered from this being released around the same month as Crash Team Racing. So I think you know a lot of people played this as kind of like a <laughs> kind of as like a, a holdover until CTR drop. But playing this game, I just felt like it was a complete step back from what Transformed established. Now 
Team Sonic Racing did have a very interesting and innovative mechanic. What I did like about it was the fact that we have, I, to my knowledge, we haven't seen this in a car racer before. So instead of you having, you know, the racing game be more individualized, your results are based on how your team plays um, with each other within the stages. So it's not just a one-man show. So you can come in first place, but if your partner comes in eighth and ninth, you can still end up losing the race. And I thought that mechanic right there was very innovative. So yeah, yeah that that was something like, okay, that has very interesting... You know that encourages communication throughout online play that encourages a lot of like communication in general with this particular game but going back to the game itself i didn't the courses were meh the gameplay was solid but still it just didn't feel it didn't have the same energy as the game that came before it yeah so i i i'll start off by saying i like this game but i don't like it more than all stars racing transform so that that's the peak game um i do think that this game team sonic racing could have coexisted with and built off what all stars racing transforms did because you could have you could have done the whole team based system and, and included all the other sega characters and also had the whole system where you know um, where you have all, all what am I trying to say? You can have all the Sega characters included and all the transforming down, right? You can drive, you can fly, you can do whatever, and also try to integrate it. I think what happened is I have a feeling personally that they were going in that direction and they questions started popping up like, you know oh, wait, well, how, how would we do the slipstream if someone is in the sky? Or, oh, how would we do the boat if somebody um, if someone gets hit, we can't give them the, the skin boost and, and so right. forth. So I don't know if that's what turned people off to kind of simplify it. But I, I really do believe that if they just design the tracks around, you know, maybe there's a part of the level where you and your team all need to transform into a boat or, or you and your team all need to drive uh, together. Like maybe that would be a little easier to or to integrate both at the same time. Um, I do have to say that I did convince about nine of my friends to buy this game <laughs> because okay. the, the, the online presence is not there uh, in, no. in Team Sonic Racing. So we do still play it. Um, I, I do really, really love the point system because it's, it's the only game we, we laugh i say it's the only game you can get first place and lose or the only game you can get a last place and win so <laughs> yeah that's true. That's true. um but i i think because other than the whole crash team racing coming up as a competitor to this game this game did not receive the same marketing and the same TLC as All Stars Racing and All Stars Racing Transform. Absolutely. Um, what I mean by that is they didn't have that, you know, that third party, you know, character get introduced where, you know, Disney's going to market it or talk about it on their, their social platforms because Wreck It Ralph is in it or Microsoft is going to push it on its store because Banjo is in it. So it, it already suffered from that. Yeah. And then off the bat, the really if, if you think about it the only marketing that sega did to push this game at all was those little animated shorts on on youtube sure. and those shorts alone didn't really tell me anything about the game it was just a fun short that i watched online you know what i'm saying so i i, I think that was a suffering point point. and one of the things that this game didn't do that it should have done that all Stars Racing and All Stars Racing Transformed did do is once you pick up that game, I, I can start it. I have unlocked everything. I have all the characters. I have all the levels. Other than like little cosmetic things, you know, right. you, you can change the color of your car, which is which is cool in my opinion. You can change, have little car parts and all whatnot, but it's it's not enough to keep a base of people around right. to want to play more of the game you know all stars racing transform was really cool because i was getting credits i went to the shop i bought new characters it it made me want to play and keep unlocking things yes. and 
because of that alone, the longevity of people playing the game and, and being interested in using it as a kart racer stayed longer. Sonic All-Stars, uh, so Team Sonic Racing, people started playing it. They already had everything. You know, they felt like they got their fill and that was it, you know? Right. So I, I, I wish that, and, and this game also didn't have DLC. I think the other two did. Uh, I think the Metal Sonic was released in the last one. There was some DLC um, characters and tracks on Steam exclusive for All-Stars Racing Transform. So this game kind of just came out and then they kind of just didn't support it <laughs> also. Yeah, so. yeah, that's unfortunate. But like, and I agree, the game is by no means terrible, but if you compare it to the one that came before it, it, just, it was a huge step back. And you would think this game is being developed by or developed for the latest consoles. Because mind you, Transform was originally a 360 PS3 game. So you have this one yep. title being developed for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Okay, we're gonna get a more fleshed out, more immersive experience, but that just was not the case. So, okay. Sure. I, I, I just felt that they, they built up what they had to do and they kind of took a step back into a, a, a direction where it was like, okay, well, I kind of miss all that other stuff that you did the last game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. And especially cutting away, the, kind of going back to marketing, removing all the other Sega characters wasn't a good move either. Because, you know, if you're a big Knights fan or a good Monkey Balls fan, you might not be a big Sonic fan, you know? Right, So, right. But on the, on, the, on the flip side, if it was called Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, you know, Team Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, you know? Um, a Sonic like, fan would have got it regardless because they just want to play Sonic can be the dominant character, but exactly. I, now, now I can't play, you know, I can't have the outrun car. Sky's <laughs> Arcadia Racer is gone, Knight's right. Racer is gone, I I X is gone. <laughs> right, exactly, so, exactly. Uh, so that was that was. I don't think that was a good move for them either. Where do you see Sonic moving into 2020? Ooh, where do I see Sonic? Twenty twenty one and beyond. Yes. Um. So I, I gave this some thought because you know, the Sonic franchise. You know, say what you will about you know Sonic versus Mario versus this. I I do feel like as far as a video game mascot or just a a, a fictional mascot overall, I think Sonic's. Sonic is highly recognizable even outside of video games. So my first thing is, I would love to see Sonic do more collaborations outside of just crossovers within video games. You know, Sonic has a lot of appeal from a marketing standpoint. So in the past, we've had collaborations with Sonic and Puma, Sonic and, you know, even some of the more weirder ones like Sonic and Progressive or Sonic and Glam Glow. So I would like to see Sonic do more collaborations and more lines of business you know, outside of video games. I think that'd be really cool and just get Sonic's face on different types of products. Um, I know, you know, now with the 29th anniversary, Sonic is um, teaming up with G Fuel to get their own flavor. I think it's like Peach Rings or something like that. So yeah. more, more stuff like that would be pretty awesome. Um, as far as the games themselves, I know Sega's biggest thing is innovation. They always want to innovate. They never want to make the same game twice. I agree with you saying keeping Christian Whitehead in charge of the 2D department. So you always have a solid 2D title to have. But I think in terms of the evolution of the series, I think that they just have to find some consistency in the overall tone of the franchise. You know, you, you have to remember what put Sonic on top to begin with and stick with that. You know, just have some have some idea or a definitive image for what Sonic is, you know? So I think for the next game, I think as long as they can keep the tone right and the marketing and keep everything, you know, true to what Sonic is as a character, I think they'll be fine. Um, besides that, Sonic has been killing it. So I can't really think of anything else that they can do differently outside of those two. Sure. So I, I, I agree with, first off the bat, Sonic, Sonic is a different character than Mario and Zelda and um, Crash Bandicoot. It, he he is a mass multimedia character. He's, yes. he's been everywhere, right? Comic books, movies, I think four or five TV, five TV shows. Yeah, um, you know products galore. Like he is <laughs> on the face of everything. The yeah. Pumas, you know, like the, those those Pumas are really cool. <laughs> I, I actually did I ever tell you, I, I have them. I have. Oh, them. you have I got those. a pair of them. Yeah. So I, nice. I, 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 I managed to snag a pair. I, I tracked them down. I was on a mission <laughs> because they said they said there's only five in existence. And I was like, I will Whoa. find one. 
<laughs> how much? So, how much did you wind up having to pay for those? Uh, I can't say that on, on the air. I can't say that on a YouTube video. <laughs> I can only imagine. You can only imagine. So, Sonic is not just a video game character. So, I, I really think that Sega they can't balance Sonic as a video game character and a mass multimedia character at the same time. Right? Because if 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 you really think about it, you know, what did we get in 2019 and 2020? The, the last big Sonic games that came out was in 2017, Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces, you know. So what, what came out of it? You know, Sonic moved to IDW, um, the comic book series just started there. They created all these shorts um, and the movie, you know, so I'm sure they had some sort of involvement in, in with that in some way, shape or form and planning and marketing and going back and forth with Paramount and whatnot. But I feel one of the reasons that I say that where they, they can't figure out how to do both at the same time is the movie came out. Where's the new Sonic game? You know, like where's something? Because if you know, if I was a company, if, if I was in charge in that sense, I would have made sure to line everything up. Like, right. the movie's coming out February 14, 2020. The new Sonic game's coming out February 14, 2020. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, like get get them to the movies, then get them to go home and buy my game on the eShop. And I, and I think I feel I, and I see this as missed opportunities. You know, like Sonic movie comes out and. I go to the store, I can't find any products for the Sonic movie. I can't find any Sonic products, you know? So I, I think that's one thing where Sega needs to gain a better balance on that. You know, he's not just a video game character. He needs to be balanced as such. Um, yeah, and that's they, the they did do a really good job doing that in the 90s. And that's why Sonic came to fame so fast because they understood that, you know? And because um, at the time, the, the CEO of Sega, Tom Kensky, I believe his name was. Yes. He was a big marketer for Hot Wheels and Barbie. And he understood that. Um, and that's why we see Sonic. They had three cartoons in the 90s. He was in the Macy's Day Parade. Like they needed yep. to make him a character. Like they were video game company first, and then they were, you know, talent agency second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so for sure. That's a fact. I, I think that needs to be pushed. Um, Furthermore, I, I do like the Sonic Mania style uh, of that types of games, but I, I also think that the adventure style or the adventure series in some way needs to be revisited because if you really think about it, you know, we, we went through, you know, over 15 games and to me, Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 laid those two games alone that, that came out you know one two years apart from each other 19 years ago has have laid so much of the framework of like sonic's mythology son well, what sonic is you know when we learned about the echidna tribe and who they are building off of sonic 3 and knuckles we learned about um the space colony what gun is eggman's extended family um, so there was a lot of things got pulled out of those games that are used till today that people still talk about and people still build off of. So I, I personally would really like to see some sort of like Sonic Adventure Mania type deal. I think that would be kind of interesting where they take that style of gameplay and they remix it almost with this kind of the same touch and love as Sonic Mania had. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I think there's certain people they need to keep around, like Christian Whitehead's big, you know, um, Tyson Hess, big too. You know, he went into, um, I don't know if you knew this, Tyson Hess was called into Paramount to help fix the Sonic movie design. So it, it's just crazy to me that some of the best stuff that's been coming out over the last couple of years really by fans, you know. Um, and, I, and I think that's the next wave for Sega to really, I think Sonic Mania was a wake-up call for them to really incorporate some of these fans who are very, very passionate about the franchise, very passionate about the series, and getting them included in the project. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> you agree? I agree, too. <laughs> <laughs>
So let's let's call it a wrap there. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. I'm sure Olympus Gaming and I will be partnering down the road for more discussion videos. Uh, please make sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Uh, Olympus Gaming, do you want to say anything before we go? We love Sonic. You know, we love to see. Love you know, Sonic. We love Sonic. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's it's always a fun time partnering with Hotline. And, uh, you know, I just hope you guys enjoyed this video and you guys take something from it. And if you want, like more Sonic content, come over to my channel. I have plenty of Sonic reviews for you guys to check out. So I'll see you all guys just over there. I'll make sure to link all of Olympus Gaming's Sonic reviews in the description below. Absolutely. Thanks, guys.